But Mark, let's close out the podcast taking a look at the Dallas Cowboys. And this is a team that, just to be frank, and I'm sorry if you're listening to us without headphones, I'll wait a couple seconds for you to put on headphones. Three, two, one. It's been a shit show, basically. Um, This has been a bad season for the Cowboys. Steve Young basically is saying that the season's all over. Troy Aikman saying that basically um, that what Jason Garrett's got to go and Jerry's out of his mind and that this team, this they need a new direction for the franchise. I just want to ask you this. Instead of our typical, like, should Jason Garrett get fired? Because I feel yeah. like we ask it every single year. We have to, yeah. I, I just want to ask you this. Is he the problem? Is Jason Garrett the problem with the Cowboys? He is a problem. I don't think he's the problem. Um, so he's a problem because he's never been a very good coach mm-hmm. for them. Um, and there's been plenty of times where he should have been fired. Mm-hmm. I mean, very similar to how I was talking about, you know, for Mike McCarthy, he's got his flaws. Jason Garrett's got his flaws. But the difference between Mike McCarthy and Jason Garrett, Mike McCarthy's had success. He goes to the playoffs. Yeah, Jason Garrett's had some success, but not great success. He's eight. I'll put it this way. What do we used to say about Jeff Fisher? Seven and nine bullshit. Seven and nine bullshit. Jason Garrett, eight and eight bullshit. Most of his seasons have been eight and eight. He's three and five this year, four and twelve in 2015, nine and seven in 2017. Mm-hmm. Eight and eight bull five hundred bullshit from Jason Garrett. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those Marvin Lewis rules of when is enough enough? Mm-hmm. Um and you know, in the postseason. One for t- uh, one and two, so he's lost twice. Mm-hmm. Only won once. It's not that great right now. He's kind of getting propped up by a great running back, Ezekiel Elliott. Dak Prescott in the passing game is not good, and it's not all Dak Prescott's fault. A big problem is they don't have wide receivers to throw the ball to. Now they've got Amari Cooper, um, but that's only so much. Somehow this defense is doing a fantastic job, mm-hmm. uh, and that's another one of those things where that's kind of saving the Dallas Cowboys from getting embarrassed week in and week out uh, because they're not scoring that many points. They're Mm -hmm. just lucky enough to have one of the better defenses in the NFL, so they're not really giving up any points either. Um, it's, It's pretty shocking to me. But when it comes to Jason Garrett, yeah, he is an issue, but there are more issues with the Dallas Cowboys, and it's going to take a while to fix any of them. Well, and the thing that I look at is... Jason Garrett, to me, should be fired from the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. But to me, Jerry Jones is also the problem. Like, he is, to me, the problem with the Cowboys. And I'll be honest, this this title that we put out there was basically a way of asking, should Jason Garrett be fired? But also putting a title that's like, is Jerry Jones the problem? Or saying that Jerry Jones is the problem in Dallas. Because... To me, it all, like, cut a head off of a snake, and then what do you got? You got nothing. Like, Jerry Jones is at the top. He is the head of this Cowboy team. He is the owner. He's making all the decisions. And I just feel like it's gotten to a point where Jerry don't know what's best for this team anymore. Jerry doesn't know what is good for the Dallas Cowboys. And some Cowboy fans may say, well, he never really knew what was good for this team, he just lucked into having a era of Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith, Michael Irvin, and Jimmy Johnson. Like, he just lucked into having all of those guys on the team at the same time. Because yeah. look at what happened once Jimmy Johnson got fired and Switzer came in, all the problems between Switzer yeah. and Troy Aikman and how mm-hmm. they could have won Super Bowls, but that animosity got to yeah. that team. You know what it is? It's my Weezer mm-hmm. argument. Okay. Nobody really likes Weezer anymore. Okay. But nobody can deny... I listened to Buddy Holiday the other day. Well, that's the point. <laughs> nobody can deny that those first three albums were mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. You ask someone, what's your favorite Weezer album? They're going to tell you Pink, maybe Green, Pinkerton, or Blue. Mm-hmm. Blue being the, the real correct yeah. answer. Blue's the best one. But you listen to Weezer now and how hard they try to sound like Weezer mm-hmm. of the Blue Album. When they were just nerds in a garage, smoking weed, <laughs> playing Dungeons and Dragons, making music about how nobody really likes them. They 
lucked into something and they had no clue what it was they lucked into. I mean, my name is Jonas, yep. Buddy Holiday, saying ain't Buddy so. Buddy Holiday, yeah. Holiday, like. They had so the many album. damn good songs, but they don't know how they did it. They have no clue what they did. <laughs> That's what it is. They have no clue what they did and they have been trying <sighs> so hard to recapture it. So you're Jerry saying Jones has he doesn't no know clue what, what went right. He does not understand what oh. worked, but something did. And mm-hmm. he is trying so desperately to figure it out. And he's clinging to a guy like Jason Garrett because he told himself, Jason Garrett's the guy. Mm-hmm. Jason Garrett's the guy that I need. Mm-hmm. And it's not true. It's not true. It is not working. Well, I'll tell you this on the other side. Mm-hmm. And Cowboy fans are going to get mad at me. But I am going to say it. He also thinks that Dak's the guy. Yeah. And I'm going to shatter some cowboy hopes here. Dak is not the guy. Dak is a Mm -hmm. good quarterback. Yeah. Dak is, if he's your starting quarterback, you're sitting there going, he's a fine starting quarterback. You know what tier of quarterback Dak Prescott is? He's Matt Stafford. He's that quarterback where it's like, hey, Dak's our starting quarterback. We don't really need to look at the starting quarterback because we've got one. Mm -hmm. But is he going to be that guy that wins? Is he going to be the guy to get you get you to the playoffs on his own, win a Super Bowl on his own? No. And another thing that really hurts this team is they've got some good pieces. The one that you hear is, "Oh, look at the offensive efficiency and Dax numbers." Once the offensive line isn't as great as it once was, and that is true. But you look at it, the defense is good. They've got uh, Ezekiel Elliott, one of the best running backs in the league. To me, I look at it and I go, Dak is never going to be like your Drew Brees, like your Tom Brady, like your Peyton Manning, like your Aaron Rodgers. He's never going to be in that tier. He's going to be that guy that is like, I think of Matt Stafford because of the Lions and the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys are in a Lions territory right now. Where it's like the Lions aren't as bad as they used to be, but the Lions aren't really like they may make the playoffs one or two years. They might get a real good year and sneak a couple divisional games, get to 10 wins, get to a wild card game, and then get screwed in a playoff game and then not be able to win that game. And I think that's where the Cowboys are right now. They're an 8 and 8, 9 and 7 team. They might sneak into the playoffs because there might be a year, hey, we got two against. The Eagles, we got two against the Giants. Hey, we got to 10 wins. We get into the playoffs. But then when they get to the playoffs, they don't really do anything. I know that Cowboy fans, and I'm with you, you're going to comment about that game in Green Bay where that was a catch with Des Bryant, and I totally agree with you. That was a catch. But every single time the Cowboys have made it to the playoffs, something has happened, and most of that was with Tony Romo. Now with Des. I don't even think you get to the playoffs. So you got to think of one of two things. You're either going to extend Dez, like Jerry Jones said, listen, Dak is our quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. He's young and he's going to be extended. That basically tells me your only option is firing Jason Garrett and getting a quarterback or getting a coach that wants to work with Dak mm-hmm. Prescott, a la what the Rams did. I need to make a correction for all the Weezer fans out there. Mm-hmm. I said the pink album, red album. Okay. Um, I said it was saying Pinkerton, and I made the red yeah. album pink. Mm-hmm. Doesn't make sense. Uh, do you think? And I think I know your answer. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think that the Dallas Cowboys need to figure out their new quarterback situation this off season? And if so, draft, free agency, what should they do? Not this season. No. Here's what I think. Honestly, if I'm a Cowboy fan, and Cowboy fans are gonna hate me, you know what I would want for the Cowboys? Tank? Tank next year. Because you want to know what? I'm looking at this kid from Alabama. I'm looking at Tua Tonga Viola, and I'm looking at him going, man, he would be really good. He's going to be really, really good at the next level. Kid does not turn over the football. What's the one thing with quarterbacks? We say, well, as long as they take care of the football, kid takes care of the football. I just don't trust an Alabama quarterback. And that's you have your faith in that because how many of them – have really panned out to do anything of recently. But he's just got that athleticism. He's got that arm. He takes Mm -hmm. care of the football. 
I just don't think the Cowboys are going to be in that situation. The only reason I say no to this offseason is... Who are you going to get? Exactly. Like, in the draft, you... In the draft, you don't have a guy that jumps off the page. And if you do, Justin Herbert's that guy. But even Justin Herbert, like, think about it. If a Tua or a Dwayne Haskins or, like, if – let's put it this way. If Justin Herbert was in the same class as Jameis Winston and Marcus Mariota, he wouldn't even be a thought for that first-round pick or that first overall pick. If he was in the Goff-Wentz draft – wouldn't even be in the conversation. The only reason he's in the conversation of the number one pick is because he's the best quarterback right now. And the Giants, and the Giants desperately need, really one. need a quarterback. Because yep. Kyle Luletta, there's faith in him, but he gets arrested. We don't know what he's going to pan out to be still. Eli looks like he's on the way out. The Cowboys, I think they're stuck. They ha- like, Although I think Dak is not going to be that, the be- Dak ceiling, Nick Foles. And I mean Super Bowl MVP. I, I mean that by in the right situation, the perfect storm, mm-hmm. he can win a Super Bowl. But the team has to be the team has to be good. The coach ha- like, and that's the thing I think that we I was gonna get to at the end of the last segment that I think this Cowboy team like Dak Prescott can win a Super Bowl. He can't do it by himself. In the NFL, you cannot do things by yourself. Look at the teams. That are do it by yourself. The Packers being one of them. We're looking at it right now. Aaron Rodgers cannot do it by himself. Look at Tom Brady. Tom Brady has not had to do it by himself. He's had Bill Belichick. He's had wide receivers. He's had running backs. He's had defenses. Like, look at all of the, I'm going to say screw it. Look at most of the Super Bowl wins for the Patriots. Without Adam, Adam Vinatieri, he doesn't get two, his first two. Without Malcolm Butler, they lose against the Seahawks. Um, let me think. That's about three of the five. What two am I missing? Um, really, the the Panthers and the Eagles didn't come down to a last second, I don't believe. Maybe the Panther one did, but I don't think the Eagle one did. My point is, Tom Brady didn't do it all by himself. He had guys around him. He had a coach that was well off as well. Dak in a perfect storm could help a team win the Super Bowl. But he can't do it on his own. He's not at that top, like he's not at that Drew Brees level mm-hmm. where, yeah, Drew Brees had some help, but Drew Brees is really good. And I think that the Cowboys are in a situation where we're not moving on from a quarterback. We have our guy, we've got Dak. They need to be thinking LA Ram style of hey, we got our guy. Let's go ahead and find a guy build the who's team. gonna come in and build it because the thing with Dak, when I keep saying he's not on this level, he's not on this level, it's like I heard on NFL Live this week. Dak is who we thought he was going to be or who I thought he was going to be. He's not a first-round pick. He's a second-round pick. you got to accept that and build around him. Yeah, and and I think that's all right because not everybody gets to have Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. Not everybody gets to have Tom Brady. That's okay. You can make it work. I mean... The Jaguars almost went to the Super Bowl with Blake Bortles. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he was a first round pick, but he shouldn't have been. The Ravens went to the Super Bowl with Trent Dilfer. And Joe Flacco. Uh-huh. You know, they won Super Bowls with Trent Dilfer and Joe Flacco. The Seahawks won a Super I mean, I would say I'd say Russell Wilson's better than Dak, but Way third better. round quarterback went yeah. to the Super Bowl with him. A quarterback that's not that great, you can still be successful with. You just gotta build the team. And that's mm-hmm. the thing that I don't think the Dallas Cowboys know how to do is build that team. You know what? I'm going to put it this way. And I think Rex Grossman was a first-round pick, right? Yep. But he didn't, to me, he didn't look like a first-round pick. I'm going to say this. Bears went to the Super Bowl with Rex Grossman. They did. Like, I mean, just because you have Dak in your team doesn't mean he's never going to get there. But it just, I feel like the Cowboys, do I think Dak will ever win a Super Bowl in Dallas? No. But Jason Garrett's not the guy to bring his potential out. And to me... It comes down to what the Cowboys fire Jason Garrett, bring in somebody, and then that question becomes who? Who do you think is out there that can bring the most out of Dak Prescott? Is it a guy that you mentioned in our Cleveland talk? Is it Matt LaFur? Is it the guy in Tennessee that you think is this year's Sean McVay? Yeah, I mean, I think it'd be cool. If it's not this year, I think it'll be next year's. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I don't think we have a clear enough picture of who our next head coaching candidates are going to be just mm-hmm. yet. 
Um, there's not a clear cut winner of like, yeah, obviously everyone's going for this one. Hugh Jackson. That's who they bring in. I hope so. You bring in Hugh Jackson. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> it would be very cool. I just like, to me, I just, I feel like the biggest problem, this will be my final thought. Jerry Jones is the problem with this team. The Cowboys are not going to be good again. It's kind of like, I'm going to compare it to this. WWE. Right now with WWE, the biggest thing among fans is that the product isn't as good as what it used to be. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be good until Vince McMahon steps away. That Vince has gone crazy. He... Vince is the kind of guy that no. What worked for me in the past, big sweaty men, mm -hmm. Undertaker, Triple H, Brothers of Destruction. They're bringing back all these old wrestlers to fight. Which the the match at Melbourne, Australia, god awful. Like the Undertaker and Triple H are so old, the words like I don't want to watch this, and they don't want to give the young. He doesn't want to give the young guys a chance because he doesn't trust them. That's yeah. what the Cowboys are. They will not be as good as they once were. Until Jerry Jones decides, hey, you know what? I need to step away. I can be the owner, but I need to get someone in here who I can trust to be my GM and make those decisions, and I can just sit back and be the owner of this team. Yeah, it's going to be a while, I think, before we really see the Dallas Cowboys being that good again. How do you think they finish the season? That's the last thing I'll ask you before I wrap everything up. They're I'm three putting and my five money right on now. six and ten. So three more wins? I mean— yep. They got the Eagles are going to be tough. They play them twice. The Saints is a loss. The Redskins could be a loss again, um, but that might be a close one. I mean, really, the last three what Colts, Bucks, and Giants, and even the Colts might be a toss up. And they might be able to surprise one of the divisional games. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the thing that I look at, or the Giants could surprise them at the end of the year. Who knows? The, yeah. the Giants could have that first round pick all locked up at the end of the year. I mean, they play the 49ers this week on Monday night. They lose that game. That's two of the top three teams that they've lost to. Mm -hmm. But this is where you guys come in. Let us know what you think down below in that comment section. What's the problem with the Cowboys? Is Jason Garrett, Jerry Jones? I know that this one, I wasn't expecting this segment to focus a lot on Dak, but I guess the franchise quarterback. Yeah, it's it, a big it, part. It's kind of a triangle. You got your owner, you got your coach, you got your quarterback, and they all got to work in tandem so we spent a little time on Dak let us know what you think about that as well want to thank you guys for checking out the onside kick talking about football each and every week make sure to support us on Patreon buy that MVP t-shirt to support us as well down below in the description or mostvalopodcast.com where you can catch MVP each and every day and then last but not least please go on to Apple iTunes and, or Apple Podcasts and iTunes and rate the show. Let us know what you feel, why you like listening to the show each and every week. It really helps us out. want to thank you guys for listening on podcast services around the world. want to thank you guys for watching us on YouTube. And as always, have a good day, everybody. 